God bless you. This is Reverend Charles Levi Martin. I want to thank so many of you who responded uh, to my invitation uh, to go to Effort Baptist Church in Painesville, Liberia to preach for the 142nd anniversary. Let me take a moment to thank the pastor, the members of the anniversary committee, the deacon board, the members of the trustee and the entire congregation and the many Liberians who showed up who were so receptive to the message. I thank God for having been an instrument in using this message to reach our people to continue to keep tranquility and peace uh, and calm in the midst of what we're going through. Uh, what I'd like to do is share the text and uh, the theme uh, for the message. The text was provided by the Effort Baptist Church Anniversary Committee and Congregation, and it comes to us from Paul's letter to the Church of Philippi, that is uh, Philippians chapter 2, verses 8 through 11, and it reads thus, And being found in fashion as man, he humbled himself and became obedient even unto death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore God also hath highly exalted him, and giving him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus is Lord to the glory of God the Father. That every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Hence the theme and the message, attracting greater glory through servanthood. Father, use me even now as we preach and reenact this sermon that you provided for your people. May it reach fertile hearts that we too will find peace in the midst of whatever is happening in our nation. Give us, O oh God, a mind to serve you. Give us, O oh oh God, a peaceful heart and a tranquil spirit in Jesus' name. Attracting greater glory through servanthood. The quest of any church that seeks the glory in Christ through servanthood is a church that seeks its authentic calling. The true church of Jesus Christ is called the Ecclesia. That is a Latin word, ecclesia, call out of darkness, out of sin, out of degradation, out of unrighteousness and iniquity into the marvelous light of salvation through faith in the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Hence John, the beloved disciple of Jesus, penned the vision and mission of Jesus Christ with a vivid clarity and simplicity found in John 3.16. He writes, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Verse 17 seals the vision. He writes, for God sent his son into the world not to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. We therefore must conclude that the purpose of the church is for the saving of humanity by and through the saving work of Jesus on Golgotha's hill on the cross of Calvary. The act of the crucified cross of Jesus was the demonstration of love personified. The Bible declares that greater love had no man than this, that he laid down his life for his friend. He demonstrated an unconditional love in that while we were yet sinners, he took our verdict of guilty and sub substituted himself who knew no sin for our guilt and for our sin. Matthew in the 28th chapter, verse 19 and 20, paints a clear picture of Christ's call to the church. He calls us not only to love one another as he loved us, he called his church to serve his people, the sheep. Of his pasture. Jesus said, Go ye therefore into all the world and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, 
teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you, and lo, I be with you always, even to the end of the world. That is the great commission that he has given us, the church. That is what he has bequeathed to Effort Baptist Church and to God be the glory, for you have run with the calling for 142 years. The church is called to service. Jesus has commanded us to do as he has done. The Son came not to be served, but to serve humanity. We sing the song, everywhere he went, he was doing good. He was a mighty healer. He cleansed the leper. When the cripple saw him, they started walking everywhere he went. My Lord was doing good. He's a good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for his sheep. He has called us not to be lords, but to be servants. Servants. He said, he who is greatest among you, let him be the servant. Effort has survived even thrived for 142 years because there were men, women, and children before you who served each other, who served in different times and under difficult circumstances and conditions, who made sacrifices, who heard and answered their call not to lead, but to serve. He who is greatest among you, let him be the servant. Greater glory doesn't belong to us. It belongs to God. To God be the glory. God gets the glory. God receives the glory when we serve him, when we serve our community, our common humanity, when we give service out of love, God is glorified. He has said, I will not share my glory with another. We ought to praise him. We, we ought to lift him up because this church was built on the solid rock, the rock of salvation, the rock of ages that cleft for me. The church was built on Jesus. He told Peter, thou art Peter. And upon this rock I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. Effort, you're standing because you're built on Christ. And on Christ, the solid rock, you stand all of the ground is sinking sand. All of the ground is sinking sand. We dare not trust the sweetest frame, but only lean on Jesus' name. That name that is above every name, that every knee shall bow and tongue confess that he is Lord. That name that came to seek and to serve and to save rather than be served. This, this church stands because of what and whom it is built on. It is built on Jesus. So the strong winds may blow. High tides may rise. Torrential rains may fall. But this church, authentic church of Jesus Christ, will stand until he comes because its foundation is strong. Its foundation is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. We dare not trust the sweetest frame, but only lean on Jesus' name. On Christ, the solid rock, we stand. All other ground is sinking sand. Philippians says there is no other name under heaven giving among men whereby we must be saved other than the name of Jesus. For at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and everything confess things beneath the earth, under the earth, around the earth, no matter where, everything shall confess that he is Lord. He is a marvelous servant. There is no greater name than the name of Jesus Christ. There is no name, no other name under heaven or beneath the earth that's greater than the name of Jesus. For at that name, truly every knee shall bow, every tongue confess that he is Lord. He's a Lord who's a servant leader that seeks not his salvation, but the salvation of the world. James put it this way, I wish above all things that you prosper and be in good health, even as your soul prospers. We need servants in the church. We need servants in the nation that will serve the needs of starving, hungry, sick, desperate, degenerate, disillusioned, degraded, deranged, dissatisfied, illiterate, discouraged, diseased, and poor people in our nation. We need a servant leader for the Liberian nation and people. We need a president with passion and compassion for our people. That's what we need. We need a leader with a servant heart 
a humble servant who will seek not to serve himself, but who will serve the glaring abundant needs of our nation and our people. We need a president who's God-fearing and God-following, one who is not for himself, but for others. Our history is replete with leaders of presidents, past and present, who have enriched themselves and their families of the backs of the poor, illiterate, people of our nation, presidents who have sold our natural resources to foreign companies, foreign entities, and, and foreign nations as though Liberian were their farm or their plantation. They provided their children with the best of education money can buy, while illiteracy chokes the future generations of our nation. And here we are today as a nation, while effort celebrates 142 years of service, the national elections in our nation is held in abeyance, held in suspended animation, going from NEC hearing and verdict, and now on its way, in fact, in the Supreme Court, as I reenact this message preached on November 26th. There is something wrong here. There is something unjust here that the plaintiff must receive a verdict from the hands it feels that has grieved her. That the plaintiff, then the plaintiff only feels a greater outcry when the judge in her case is the very one with whom she has the complaint. If our nation will move forward as we seek to elect a new president, the rule of law must stand supreme. We as a people, whatever side we're on, we must give God thanks and praise and give God the glory for the mindset to settle our differences by the rule of law and not by the barrel of the gun. The new beginning that lies ahead of us as a nation must not be built on falsehood. It must be built on truth and integrity. Our election must be perceived as fair. It must be believable. The many irregularities and new math of getting 1,100 votes out of a ballot area that can only provide 550 must not be something that we move on as we move forward. We cannot have the same situation repeated in the second round of our election. The integrity of the outcome will guarantee the national support of the winner. But if there is a glaring view of crookrogeism, let me repeat that. If there is a glaring view of crookrogeism, of fraudulence, it will shake the foundation of our nation. But because we cannot build a government on evil, we cannot build our new presidency, our new government on falsehood or fraudulence. The foundation of the new presidency must be built on the solid foundation of an outright victory by the ballot box as decided by the Liberian people. Let me commend President Muhammad Buhari of, the, of Africa's Supreme Power who said, the current political challenges in Liberia will be resolved through constitutional means. And he is right. This means we must wait patiently for the court's decision. Let us not be in such a hurry that we bypass the legitimate process. My mother, late mother Jean Zipporah, used to say, hurry, hurry, bust trousers. It is more important that we do the right thing than that we do it in a hurry. It is more important that we do the right thing than that we do it in a hurry. America is admonishing and advocating a speedy election. But let me warn America. Let me warn America not in my word, but in the words of Martin Luther King Jr., the martyred civil rights leader and servant. And this is what he said in the 60s. He said, America, you are too arrogant. And if you don't change your ways, God is going to break the backbone of your power and turn it to a nation that doesn't even know his name. Trying to be the policeman for the whole human race. Uncle. We don't need you, America, to tell us to hurry up and meet the deadline. We don't need you to tell us that 
the corruption or new math and irregularities in our election wasn't so terrible as to warrant a challenge. While you're still screaming about Russia meddling in your election. We don't, we don't need you meddling in ours. We don't need you trying to tell us to hurry it up. We need to do the right thing. We need to do it right and not in a hurry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We see what's happened in your own election. Amen. We see all the irregularities that happen in your own election. While you're screaming about Russia meddling in your election. So much so that in the first year of Trump's election, the one thing that sucks all the air out of his presidency is the Russian probe. The Russian investigation. The Russian collusion. The regular Russian irregularities. And some even question the legitimacy of the Trump's presidency. In fact, some even 60% of America don't believe that Donald Trump is a legitimate presidency. We don't want this for our nation. So we want to do it right. And not in a hurry. Jesus gives us all the golden rule. It is said, do unto others as you will have them do unto you. That is the Jesus golden rule. America has his own golden rule. And her golden rule is he who has the gold rules. But not in our elections, America. We decide when, we decide why, we decide who, and not you. We will do the right thing as a nation. We will do the just thing as a nation. The prophet Micah asked the question, what does God require of us? That is the question. What does God require of us? And he answered it with an exclamation mark that we love justice, show mercy, and walk humbly with our God. What does God require of us? That we love justice, that we show mercy, and walk humbly with our God. If we will be a great nation. This must become true. We must love justice. We must show mercy. And we must walk humbly with our God. So that God will get the glory out of this. We would have served our nation well. Serve each other with grace. And even reference to almighty God. If we do the right thing and do it with transparency, if we do it in a way of service, if we come to serve our nation and serve our people and serve each other by doing what is just, what is right, and what is pleasing to our God. The church must glorify God and the nation must do the same. For the same people in the nation are the people in the church. And the people in the church are the people in the nation. And what affects the people in the church affects the people in the nation. We are not any different. We are one and the same. And if God will get the glory out of this, that we too must learn to serve. Our leaders must learn to serve. They must come to the understanding that they've not come to rule over us, but they've come to serve us. Serve us with love. Serve us with passion. Serve us with humanity. We must understand that Jesus came to seek and to save and to serve those who were lost. Everywhere he went, he was doing good. He's a mighty healer. He cleansed the leper. When the cripples saw him, they started walking. Everywhere he went, my Lord was doing good. He came to serve those who were lost, those who were disenfranchised, those who found themselves on the outside, those who were the least, the lost, the last, the left behind, that's who he came to serve. Our next leader, our next president must come to serve us and not to rule over us. As believers, God requires us to be different. We are in the world, but not of the world. God gets the glory when our lives reflect his indwelling spirit within us. To be like Christ is to be a servant. There is a greater honor in service. A nation is great only when its people serve. A church is great only when its members serve. An individual is great only when he finds ways to serve humanity. Martin Luther King and all people who have served will sing a great song. If I can help somebody, then my living 
is not in vain. If we do this, God will get the greater glory out of it. King would say, I just want to do God's will. And God will get the greater glory every time we come to seek and to serve and to help those who are less fortunate than ourselves. 142 years effort because you've taken the effort to serve. Liberia, if we will move forward, then we must seek to serve our people rather than to be scavengers as leaders and take everything we can. King would say, I just want to do God's will. I just want to do God's will. Jesus, our Lord, came to serve as a servant. He served a woman with an issue of blood. Here's a woman who had gone everywhere, could find no cure. But all she would say, if I could but touch the hem of his garment, I would may be made whole. And all she pressed through the crowd until she could get near him and touched the hem of his garment and virtue came out of him. We need a leader that we can touch, a leader with compassion, a leader with passion, a leader who is not come to be a leader, but one who has come to serve us out of love and out of compassion. And God will get the glory. Liberia will get the glory. Liberia will be reinvigorated. Liberia will be re-inspired. Liberia will be re Re -re -re resurrected Liberia will be renewed when we get a leader who comes to serve and not to take for himself. Throughout the history we find leaders who've come from fire storm days who've come and, 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 and served companies and nations who have taken the resources out of, out of our country and left us naked and barren. Firestone built Akron, Ohio of the rubbers from Liberia and even when we have Ebola, we have no company that makes gloves and the rubber comes from us. We drive our jalapes in our nation and, 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 and we build no tire companies, no tire factories. They build the tires in America and other areas of the world and bring it back and sell it to us at exorbitant prices. And our leaders benefit and our people starve. Lamco did the same thing, dug deep holes in our nation, took out the natural resources, took out the iron ore, and not one company that builds anything of our resources is done there. Our lumber has been extracted from our nation. Our oil blocks have already been sold out and individuals are multi-billionaires and millionaires and the Liberian people are left wanting. We need a leader who comes not to lead, but to serve us. Jesus says God gets the greater glory out of this every time we come to serve. Not only that, I want to end with the story of Lazarus. Because Lazarus was dead and in the tomb for four days. Jesus says, where had they laid him? And they found he found him at the cemetery and called him out. And he said, not for me, O God, but that your people will see and give you the glory. He served a dead man in the tomb who came out. Liberia can come out of the situation it's in as long as we get a leader who come to serve us. I've told this story over and over. A story of a young man who left Liberia and came to America. He forgot the training. He forgot the biblical principles he had been taught. He forgot the name of Jesus, that name above every name. And he got to this big light and big city and he turned away from God. And soon he was on drugs and alcohol and he walked away from his wife and his two children. Two years they didn't see him. Finally, after two years, his son saw a figure walking as daddy used to walk. He pulled his mama's skirt, mama, I think I see my daddy. She stops the cooking and runs outside with her two children. And he comes with the same walk, with the same walk. And they ran to him and the whole city followed him in the throng. 
Somebody saw something different in him and said, Johnny, what happened? And he said, I met a man. I met a man named Jesus and I had an exchange with him. He said, I give him my dope. He give me his hope. I give him my difficulties. He give me his love. I give him my degradation. He give me his salvation. I give him my state of lostness. He give me his salvation. I met a man because they saw that the stains of needles have been wiped from his veins. His eyes were clear with sight and insight. And he said, who gets the glory? They ask him. He said, to God, be the glory. Jesus, be the glory. That wonderful counselor, that mighty God, that everlasting father, that first fruit of them that slept, that living water. That name above every name. If we will attract greater glory, we as a nation will do so through serving one another through love. Liberia, let us wait patiently for God has a redeeming salvation for us. He has a new beginning for us. But if they that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. We will mount up on wings of eagles. We will run and not be weary. We will walk and not faint. Long as we build on that solid rock. And in that name above every name. For at that name every knee shall bow. Every tongue confess. And Liberia just like Lazarus, we rise up from the place of degradation to a place of new hope and new beginning. Let us attract greater glory through serving. Amen. I thank you for listening to the message. Pass it on. And as you live your life, seek to serve and not to be served. And God will get the glory out of your life. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May he lift, lift up the light of his countenance upon you and give you peace. Pray for our nation. Pray for our leaders, that our leader will have a servant heart, that our leader will be one who will follow Christ, that God will get the glory, that the Liberian people would begin to benefit from the blessings that God has placed in our nation. See you. Please pay attention and listen and connect with me on my ministry Facebook. It's called C. Levi Martin Ministries. Find it. It's just got started. My messages will be there. Whenever you're in the area, we invite you to Willingboro to our small congregation, Unity Fellowship Baptist Church. It's at 28 Creekview Road, in Willingboro, Willingboro, New Jersey. We worship at the Willingboro VFW Post. You can find me at Charles Levi Martin on Facebook. God bless you. Heaven smile upon you.